Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first and foremost, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about what has been happening around Hedera. It's been a very long time since I made an HBAR specific video. Uh, just recently, we did talk about the CBDC talks. We're going to be addressing it slightly in this video. I already kind of did break it down fully in an XRP video, but I'll just kind of quickly, you know, talk about it. Uh, but first off, I made this tweet earlier today and I said, I hope everyone that has doubted HBAR for being a bad performer during 2021 is doing their research right now. Prices for the most part are short-term distractions. I've been watching what's being built and it's something special. The HBAR connections are piling up. And yes, a lot of the breadcrumbs that we have seen in the past are morphing into, you know, something much larger than anyone can anticipate. HBAR is taking over. But not only that, but it seems like the Web3 world will be built out on Hedera. And let's talk about this. Let's discuss it. So first off, I want to start with this tweet from Kevin Cage. And he is saying, Ethereum is the leader when it comes to adoption. But there are some layer ones that are leading in terms of technology, in my opinion. Scalability, security, decentralization. And it does mention a few, HBAR, Algorand, and even Casper. And we've talked about a lot of these tokens. But when we look at what is happening, right? You know, I do think that currently in a speculative market, Ethereum is a great token to have in regards to adoption. You know, it's one of the, you know, most popular ones out there because it has been around for seven years. So it has built itself out. You know, it's been like a major choice, but things come and go. We are all aware of this. You know, you have, you know, on, on Monday, you might have the, you know, most popular thing. And on Friday, hey, nobody even cares about it anymore. I do believe that this is also going to be the same thing with Ethereum. I think for the last seven years, Ethereum has built its reputation out. A lot of people, you know, people are aware of it. You know, it's been utilized massively over the last seven years as well. So right now, it's very easy for Ethereum to be a leader in the space. But remember, Hedera is still fairly new. The entire ecosystem is still kind of being built out. But the funny thing here is that we've already seen near mass adoption from enterprise grade areas within Hedera. We actually do see over here with the CBDC solution, right? So not only was this confirmation, uh, remember what I said going back like over a week ago or so when we were talking about MTech, uh, I kind of debunked a few, you know, FUD comments on the fact that like MTech was not utilizing Hedera. And I even said like, listen, the facts are right there. You need to read between the lines and really kind of look. Um, but they were utilizing Hedera this entire time. They always have been for over a year now. I think like going all the way back to May of 2021 um, is when we really kind of started talking about MTech fully with Hedera. But we do see here we're excited to follow MTech Inc. and their HBAR CBDC solution built out on Hedera as they go through the digital dollar technical sandbox program. And uh, I'm very excited for this. I think that this is going to be something special. And we did talk about this in regards with, you know, Ripple, uh, because this is mainly on a few things around use cases specific to this. I do think that when we look at like Ripple with XRP, it's more so kind of centered around, you know, cross-border payments. But I do also believe that this entire infrastructure is one to watch for, because remember what we talk about with, you know, sustainability and the green aspect. They want to usher us into a sustainable economic future what what technology out there is providing the best option for sustainability i mean think about it you know hedera is extremely you know carbon you know positive around sustainability i mean comparing it to visa comparing it to any other token in the space is kind of a joke because you know again like none of them really kind of compete but when you compare the visa system to Hedera, I mean, that's when you really see, you know, the major innovation here. Hedera is carbon negative, but when you look at like the, the amount of, you know, energy you, have to, you actually have to utilize to transact, it is less than Visa. That's how revolutionizing this technology is on Hedera. This is why I do believe that when we look at Hedera, a lot of like the, you know, financial and payment use cases going forward, will be built out on something like Hedera. A lot of tokenization will take place on Hedera. This is what's very exciting here. And also, remember, 
a lot of the GC members have not fully announced what they are building out on Hedera. Today, we also did see an announcement around LG. LG Electronics is launching a crypto wallet app called uh, Wallopto. I hope that I'm saying that uh, name right as well on Hedera. It's powered by, you know, Hedera Hashgraph blockchain. It will support Hedera HTS tokens, but it's expected to incorporate more cryptocurrencies upon release and beta testing is in the final verification phase. I am so excited for a lot more of the GC members to get engaged in, you know, this space. Um, I think that going forward, we will see a lot more, you know, building happening from the GC members. But currently right now, you got to remember that there's still a lot of NDAs in place. You still got to remember that there's still a lot of, you know, announcements left to announce as well. But in the last nine months, you know, this year, first off, where did this year even go? Like we're already in September. It's absolutely ridiculous how fast this year has gone by. Um... But also, in the last nine months, when you look at, you know, what Hedera has announced, what they have been building, what has happened on the ecosystem, it is something special. We've technically been in a bear market for over 10 months now. And the craziest thing about that is that it hasn't even felt like that. I mean, I don't really pay attention to price action all that much. Like I said, it's like a short-term distraction. But what I have been paying attention to is what is being built out on this ecosystem, the ecosystem of growth as well. And what we have really seen is not only an exponential growth of users, but we've also seen an exponential growth of adoption. We're talking about NFTs growing out on the platform, being incorporated um, in this community and growing rapidly. Of course, yes, there has been some rug pulls. There has been some scammy projects out there. That's why you always have to do your own research. But when we look at things happening around this you know, space with Hedera, it is something revolutionary. And I would, I would argue that things are morphing into reality around Hedera now. Toco as well. So say hello to Toco, the enterprise-grade tokenization platform created by DLA Piper and enabled by the Hedera network, built out on Hedera. When we actually look at this, right? So I actually, I, I'm going to turn this up slightly. It's not a main focus on the sound, um, but I'm going to kind of talk over it and discuss a few things around this and actually talk to you guys about the value proposition behind this network as well. Toco is empowering value creation through the tokenization of asset classes. So when we look at all of these asset classes, right? So you have a few things. You have debt, equity, you know, reinsurance, uh, you also see real estate, ESG, you know, intellectual property, project uh, finance. Like these are huge areas. But I don't think that people realize how large of a use case this actually is. Recently, we did talk about Toco. In fact, I actually spotlighted a comment that was on that video that was talking about imagining a wallet where you can have, you know, real estate, debt, equity, all this, you know, illiquid asset classes that a lot of people can't really you know, invest in fractionalization, if you will, um, on one wallet. That is revolutionizing. But also think about how much money this is actually disrupting. And at the core, you know, this is built out by a global law firm. Like that is something special. But also just imagine how much value will, you know, be derived from this alone. Making previously illiquid assets now investable opportunities providing access to a wider and global investor base. With Toco, the highly complex regulatory process is securely managed by a global law firm. And that's the best part about this as well, is like, you know, the regulatory, you know, aspect of this is secure through a massive law firm, which you love to see. Help you navigate towards your best outcomes, making it faster, cheaper, and easier. The intersection of law and technology. A step toward the future. Tokenize your assets with Toco. And I love the quality of this. Like, this is so high quality to me. And also remember, like, DLA Piper is no joke. Like, they are, you know, a fairly large, you know, law firm. They are a global law firm. We've talked about them in the past. Um, but something like this that is, you know, an enterprise-grade tokenization platform itself really kind of cater to the enterprise-grade area is something pretty large. Like this is big money. Like the enterprise grade area is big 
money. A lot of people think that it's very boring, but that's okay. I mean, to me, I don't really care about, you know, Ethereum's, you know, massive amounts of numbers, that, you know, in regards to like people utilizing for NFT tokenization, stuff like that. I don't care about that because at the end of the day, and I know that this is going to, you know, <laughs> bother some people, um, a lot of the, the use case ability around Ethereum is stifled because of the problems within the mechanism itself. That's why Hedera is so special because it doesn't have any limitations. There's nothing limiting it in regards to the adoption cycle for it. You know, when you look at like the merge or like Ethereum 2.0, we've talked about why this is not really a big deal at all. Like there's nothing really changing on Ethereum. The problem is, is that it needs to upgrade. It needs to change in order for it to actually be usable um, in regards to like a mass adoption cycle. But again, Ethereum 2.0 is not that. So when we actually look at what Hedera has built, they have built a mass adoption ready network that is far greater than most networks out, or I should say almost all networks out there, um, including Visa, which is substantial. And also, just remember, Timeless, it's a pioneer in the development and delivery of carbon reporting and guarantee of origin solutions. Leveraging Hedera scalability and fixed fee structure, Timeless BV provides enterprises with commercial focused solutions to drive carbon or decarbonization. Again, sustainability has been a big focus point on this channel around Hedera. Not because I think that this is going to be like a revolutionizing area, uh, but because of the focus from the government entities. Everything that you look at, CBDCs, the future of finance, the future of this, that, whatever, I guarantee you that in almost every single article that you read around that specific innovation, guess what's coming up? Carbonization or green, sustainability, any of those terms are always going to be in those articles because that's what we are trying to get at into you know this future of money, the future of energy, etc. I seen this big shift happen once we did, you know, we started to see, you know, uh, solar panels being utilized a lot. Uh, we seen a push towards sustainability around, you know, it started with EV vehicles, right? And then from there, it kind of pushed more into like the utility, you know, area, you know, when we talk about um, energy, water, etc. And now we're really kind of pushing it into finance and the monetary system. Everything's being revolutionized from the green sustainable aspect. Uh, but I'm looking at these platforms like Timeless and Toco, like these to me are going to be the future around a lot of these areas. And Timeless is something very special. You know, not only is this going to usher us into, you know, a global uh, solution around decarbonization itself, but there's a lot of money in this as well. $851 billion value of global carbon markets. $72 billion in green hydrogen market value by 2030, and $3 billion daily funds being invested into ESG assets. It's a very large area to focus on. And when you actually look at this, right, um, I don't know if this was one of them. So this actually wasn't one. Um, but, you know, when you look at some of the other solutions that are being built out on Hedera, a lot of them did try Ethereum at, at first, um, but they couldn't utilize Ethereum because of the inefficiencies. Um, but we do see up here that companies across the globe are placing an ever greater res uh, reliance on their carbon reporting. And as such, they're looking for solutions that provide them with the ability to view their operational carbon output in real time, verify their carbon offsets and produce monetizable certificates. And Timeless is that perfect opportunity here. And uh, we do see like industries across the globe are transitioning to the new green economy. Like I said, this is the big shift. Um, as the race to net zero by 2030 continues for many companies, the need for a smarter, scalable, and efficient guarantee of origin and carbon reporting solution arose. This is also why I say like by 2030, you know, Hedera is going to be a household name. It's going to be a blue chip stock within crypto as well. Um, and we do see like there's a few things uh, that the Timeless platform operates across three key areas of the guarantee of origin, the SG compliance and carbon reporting, and of course, smart energy solutions, including microgrids and virtual power plants. Like this is... The big shift here and i think that this is the big area to focus on as well like this is why we talk about energy web token quite a bit on this channel as well like ewt is also doing some pretty cool things within energy and then we do see down here like realizing the full potential of dlt dlt is the future um i've said it time and time again on this channel like dlt is going to revolutionize every single aspect um of life and i think that we are kind of seeing that move to, you know right now currently 
Um, but we do see down here like a few, these are four bullet points I kind of want to go over. So nodes are run by the Hedera Governing Council, which means that the companies do not need to purchase and operate their own costly infrastructure. Invisible wallets allow Timeless to manage carbon token uh, wallets on behalf of customers, providing a seamless ex experience for end users. By the way, this is going to allow for a lot more nodes um, to be popping up. I think that we are also going to see a lot more, you know, GC members, I forgot the life cycle of them, but I know that it's like a few years. Um, but the interchangeable idea of those GC members is something special. We're going to see a lot more names kind of signing up for Hedera because of how revolutionizing this technology actually is, specifically even within the carbon area. And then Timeless manages all cryptocurrencies on behalf of customers so that they do not need to engage in crypto markets. And Hedera is a carbon negative network, which is highly important for customers who are looking to decarbonize across all their value chains. This is the big key here. This is the big driver of success around Hedera in regards to the adoption cycle. This is why I do say that like Hedera is the future of a lot of these, you know, industries within side of crypto. Again, like a lot of these industries within crypto are much larger than anyone can really kind of perceive them to be. Like even real estate, I do believe that once we tokenize real estate, it could actually boost the value of real estate like two times. Because you're going to see a lot more money flooding into real estate. Like right now, real estate is a $326 trillion market globally. But imagine if everyone has the op opportunity to invest into real estate through fractionalization with tokenization. Like we could easily see that, that value, you know, quickly change. We could see, you know, trillions of dollars added to that value on a monthly basis. Like this is the future. Like this is why we pay attention to tokenization. This is why we pay attention to sustainability. This is why we focus on things that matter around this space. I really could care less about what Ethereum is doing with their merge because guess what? At the end of the day, you know, we've heard them talk you know, we've heard Vitalik Buterin even discuss the fact that Ethereum is not ready for mass adoption. And do you honestly think that Ethereum 2.0 is going to allow it to be ready for mass adoption? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. When we look at what's ready for adoption, mass adoption, I should say, is something like Hedera. Being carbon negative is probably one of the biggest badges of, you know, honor that Hedera holds. Not only that, but also... I think that everyone that is focused on price also needs to go and zoom out on the chart of Ethereum. You know, a lot of these tokens do take a little bit of time to be perceived in regards to their actual value uh, that they're worth. Hedera is still one that is continuously building, continuously working and developing new things. Like the entire team around Hedera does not sleep. They do not sleep for the last couple, even for the summer, right? The last couple months, like the four, last four months alone, has been something remarkable. Seeing how much they have done in just the last four months compared to most other networks out there, other projects in the top 10, for an example, is something just special by itself. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, after you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are on this before, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.